students i alam bichodri i am going to hold this class for you especially students uh, belonging to the higher secondary uh, class who are at the fag end of your academic year and you are already scheduled with uh you pre test exams uh dear students uh, i think all of you are doing good and you are going on well with your studies and uh, today's class is meant for you and also other students the students of degree plus course third year uh, can have a glimpse of this class and also students uh, belonging to honors second year uh, who are assigned with non credit english compulsory uh, can have a look at this class uh, as well and uh, my dear students uh, i would like to uh, ask you uh, or i would like to give you a word which is the longest one in english uh, the word is neomono alpha microscopic silico volcano conoesis again neomono alpha microscopic silico volcano conoesis all of you are familiar with this word and uh, the meaning of the word is uh, actually a factitious disease of uh, lung Uh, actually caused uh, by uh, some microscopic silicate uh, produced by volcano and uh, this word contains 45 alphabets uh, so uh, before entering into the topic i have just uh, told you the word and there are more words say uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and then uh, flocculocinae helifilification and dear students uh, just to give you comic relief uh, i have told you the words uh, you always try to grasp the unfamiliar the meaning of unfamiliar words and phrases and idioms So dear students today's topic is four conditional sentences uh in our life when we uh seek to write or speak out our problems then we face uh problem two in the usage of conditional sentences so uh before entering into the topic i would like to tell you uh the conditional sentences uh actually the models will would can could may might uh these are models uh these are often ap- appear uh in conditional sentences and usually conditional sentences contain uh if the word if and uh actually conditional sentences are two types uh real conditional sentences and the unreal conditional sentences the real conditional sentences are actually uh true or first conditional then uh, at the very outset we see uh number 1 zero conditional zero conditional uh true in general generally this uh zero conditional is true uh, the implication the meaning uh, of the sentence the uh, content is true uh, the formation of zero conditional is simple present or present simple say uh if you uh heat water 200 degree centigrade 
uh, it boils or if you uh, heat water to 100 degree centigrade uh, it starts boiling then uh, the TV comes on the television comes on if you press the button if you press the button the TV comes on uh, dear students mm, the if clause can come first or uh, last in the sentence but uh, the meaning uh, is same in both cases if you use or if we use uh, the if clause in the first then we have to uh, use a comma uh, before the second clause and in both clause in both case if we use if clause in the end then uh, in both cases the meaning uh, is same so uh, if i say if we didn't have to study uh, we would go out with you uh, we would go out with you if we didn't have to study so dear student uh, here i have already given you the structural pattern and examples of zero conditional then uh, dear students let us come to the uh, uh, to number 2 uh, the first conditional the real uh, first conditional means the real uh, or possibly true or uh, future possible first conditional means future possible so uh, these are uh, uh, this is actually um, possibly true or the real the real conditional or first conditional uh, is uh, divided into three types uh, number one a future time uh, future time if plus subject plus verb pr means present tense present form uh, the other parts then uh, the second clause subject plus uh, will can may must plus verb present tense so in first conditional uh, future time we have a uh, liberty to use will can may must uh, plus verb so uh, if you come I will go if plus subject if you come verb present form or base form uh, if you come tomorrow the other parts uh, I subject plus I will uh, go with you to the party uh, if you come tomorrow uh, evening I can go with you uh, if you come tomorrow uh, morning I may uh, go with you I won't have any problem uh, if you come tomorrow or if it rains tomorrow I must not go outdoor I must remain indoors so uh, this is future time uh, if you eat a balanced diet you will keep fit if you eat a balanced diet regularly you will uh, keep fit for work say uh, e plus subject plus verb present plus other parts plus subject the second clause uh, subject plus uh, will can may must uh, th that means future time uh, we can use uh, possibly true then uh, the second one habitual habitual uh, means I am in the habit of doing 
some things this is my habit and uh, a plus subject plus verb present plus other parts plus subject second class plus subject plus verb present then other things say habitual uh, usually uh, if I have time uh, I usually work to the college I usually work to the college if I have time then uh, according to rule I never use it uh, in the second class will can may must these are plain present uh, if you come uh, sorry if uh, I have enough time I usually work to the college then uh, the second example if uh, the doctor has uh, morning DTRs, uh, he uh, visits the patients in the hospital uh, in the afternoon. So these are habitual uh, in both class uh, we use present or base form present indefinite or present tense. Then uh, command command is in the uh, first conditional e plus subject plus verb verb always in base form or present form then other parts plus uh, command form then uh, dear students hmm, if say uh, please call me if you uh, hear from Jane, uh, if you hear from Jane, please call me. Then, uh, if you go to the post office, please mail the letter. So, uh, if you uh, go to the college, please. Uh, give me the information over phone. So, these are command and now uh, we have already come up with uh, first conditional. Uh, first conditional are three types future time, uh, then habitual, then command. Then my dear students, uh, the second uh, number three, the second conditional, second conditional uh, means unreal conditions. These are not real, these are not true. Uh, and this uh, means pr uh, though uh, we see uh, past uh, second conditional uh, sentences in past form, most often we see uh, second conditional sentences are in the past form. But uh, the action uh, is present or future. The action indicates present or future time. Uh, these are unreal past, not really past. Uh, so, this uh, second conditional uh, is uh, actually uh, is not in keeping with the traditional grammar rules. So, the formation or structural pattern of second conditional are two types e plus subject plus or uh, keep in mind that uh, in uh, con second conditional sentences in the usage of second conditional sentences uh, b verb uh, b e b verb uh, is always or b verb is used uh, as or always net not as was in the second conditional say uh, in the unreal conditions of second conditional uh, this means future present time or future time but uh, in the rule uh, one or a e plus subject plus or subject may be he or he not was it or 
they wear, she wear, I wear, always wear. E plus, in case of be verb, if plus subject plus wear, and then other parts. I will say if I wear a bird, uh, then the second uh, subject I could, would, might fly a uh, verb fly in the sky base form verb in present form never the verb never uh, experience experiences any change so uh, in case of using or or uh, we may say we can say if i were a bird i could fly in the sky i might fly in the sky i would fly in the sky but if we use main verb in the second conditional then if I knew or if I did not have to study uh, I would I could or I might go out with you uh, this evening but uh, I could I cannot can't go because I have to study so apparently uh, this verb in uh, remains in first form and we use here in the second clause uh, could might or would but though this look like first structure first form but the expression the meaning is present and because these are unreal uh, not true so if I uh, had enough money, uh, I could help the poor. If I were president of Bangladesh, I could serve the people uh, more than now. Uh, if I had enough money, or if I were a millionaire, if I were a uh, moneyed person, I could help the poor. Uh, if I had if I studied well, I could make a better result. So, all these are unreal past. Though these are unreal, uh, unreal conditions, these are apparently not true. Uh, because if I studied, but I did, do not study, uh, I could make a better result. Um, I could make a be better result means I could do well in the, I can do well in the exam. So, uh, I did not uh, study, that is why I do not make good result. So, unreal uh, second condition is always present or future time indicate. Uh, then, uh, if I had the wings of a bird, I could fly in the sky. If I were you, I could uh, come to the college like a student. So, uh, I am not like you, that is why I could not, ca can't come to the college like a student. So, if uh, I knew his uh, critical uh, financial condition, I could help him. So, I do not know his critical financial condition that is why I cannot help him. Uh, so, all these are unreal condition or second condition. So, my dear students, uh, then let us come to uh, third conditional uh, or uh, third conditional that means uh, third condition always indicate indicates past time that means too late. So, let us come to third condition.
नंबर फोर थर्ड कंडीशनल्स थर्ड कंडीशनल्स ऑफ फर्स्ट टाइम फर्स्ट टाइम टू लेट स्ट्रक्चर इफ एज आई टोल्ड यू अर्लियर इफ आई यूज इफ क्लॉज इन द फर्स्ट और इन द लास्ट द इन बोथ केसेस द मीनिंग विल बी सेम सो इफ बट uh remember that uh, if i use the word if clause uh, if i use if clause in the first then uh, at the end of the first clause i have to use a comma but if i use uh, if in the last part then i need not use a comma a uh, e plus subject plus verb past perfect past perfect then other parts then comma plus subject second clause subject plus would have would could could might might have plus verb p p past participle then other parts so dear students uh, here we see the structural pattern of of third conditional e plus subject plus verb verb past always past perfect tense um that means i have to use uh, had then verb past par participle and the second clause subject plus would have could have might have plus verb past participle the other parts then uh, this is the first rule and the second one b had had plus subject plus verb pp past participle then other parts then second clause plus subject plus would could might have plus verb pp past participle then other parts here dear students uh, if is if and had here had is uh, like if had will uh, had acts as as in a state of if had means if uh, if plus subject plus verb always past perfect plus uh second clause subject plus would have could have might have verb past participle uh then dear student uh if i had had the wings uh i could have flown in the sky then if i had been a bird if i had been had is the auxiliary verb of past perfect tense been is the main verb if i had been a bird uh, i had if i had been a bird i could have flown in the sky if i had been you 
uh, I have I could have gone to college again and because you are a student I am not an student and again if I use had I been a student again uh, then the second class uh, I would have or could have or might have gone to the college like a student. Again, uh, if I had had enough money, uh, I could have, would have or might have helped the poor. Again, if I had had uh, enough money, uh, I could have or would have visited around the world. Then, uh, if I had studied well, I could have made a better result. So, it is too late. Our result ha ha had been published. That is why uh, I did not study. I could not make a better result. So, uh, this is uh, past time. Obviously, third conditional means past time. Second conditional uh, that is unreal but present or future time. So, there is the difference. This is past time. Time has already uh, gone. Uh, time has beyond reach. I could not uh, revert time. Time has already uh, gone. Time is very fleeting. If I uh, am unable to catch hold of time, so uh, I cannot uh, mend it or repair it. It has already uh, gone down, it has already damaged. So, uh, if you study, if you had studied well, uh, I think you could have done well in the examination. Uh, if she had been, uh, if she had seen the movie, she could have told me about it. Then, uh, my dear student, uh, I think uh, you are able to understand, uh, you are able to internalize this uh, critical grammatical uh, patterns, rules and regulations. If you uh, internalize the issues, if you uh, grasp the meaning, uh, structurally sages, then I think uh, you will be capable of solving uh, problems if you face uh, in completing sentences, in uh, right form verbs, in uh, in uh, other parts of grammatical structures and. Dear students, uh, uh, you know the whole world uh, has been experiencing um, very critical situation and in at this critical juncture, uh, we are um, continuing our classes, virtual uh, classes and uh, I think this is not like regular class. This is a make this is makeshift classes, makeshift attempt. Whatever available with us, we are doing uh, to make you understand. And even uh, the, we always think that you are uh, in front of us because we have we have had deep bonding and. Uh, we try to make you uh, whatever, make you understand whatever we do have. And uh, as you are at the very end of your academic life, you will uh, sit for the um, coming HS examination and I think you do, uh, may, you will make a better result because our college uh, has a very uh, prestigious uh, role in the society. Our college is the most celebrated one uh, and the second oldest one in the country. 
So, uh, our principles are, and our vice principles are, uh, our uh, esteemed colleagues are rendering relentless services for the betterment of, uh, of all of you. And uh, I think we are now uh, coming to a very uh, close, coming to, uh, we are very nearing to the uh, silver lining. Uh, we see the uh, ray of hope in the horizon and we will get over the problem that we have been facing now. Uh, so, dear students, uh, my earnest request to all of you is always read and read and read. There is no alternative to reading. So, always keep fit, keep reading and stay fine. All the best.